A high school boy was brutally killed, and this tragedy originated from an intricate love triangle between teacher and students. Giyang, No. 6 High School, is a well-known key high school in Giyang City, located next to the provincial government. Many government cadres' children study here. There are 15 classes in the senior of this school, and the class 15 is called Rich Class, which is also a plus class. Because the students who are in class 15 did not meet the admission score of this school, they paid more tuition fees so that they can enter this school. Most of the students in class 15, even if their parents are not wealthy, come from middle-class families. Due to the particularity of class 15, these students study not as well as other classes' students. In 2007, when the case occurred, the head teacher of class 15 was Wang Yongli, who was also a Chinese teacher. Wang Yongli was a popular teacher among students. In the Nongbo 6 high school BBS, she was once called the most open-minded teacher. According to Li Ping, a mischievous student in class 15, Miss Wang didn't treat us as bad students. She always said that I believe that you are all good students and can be something as long as you're guided well. Another student, Li Qiang, said that Miss Wang hardly ever complained to parents and often helped them in many ways. Once there was a student in the class who had an accident, she immediately took 2,000 yuan to help this student deal with the matter. At the same time, her professional ability was strong. Even in a great school like Number 6 Middle School, she had been rated as a model teacher and an outstanding head teacher. At that time, she was 45 years old. She occasionally talked about personal life with her students. Wang Yongli divorced at the age of 32 and had a son. At the age of 40, she remarried with the father of a girl student in her previous class. There were two boy students, Meng Chao and He Xiaoli, who had special relationships with her in class 15. For student Meng Chao, Wang Yongli had another intimate nickname, Sweet P. Before becoming Sweet P, she was recognized as Meng Chao's godmother. Meng Chao's father, Meng Mingguang, had always been grateful to his godmother, Wang Yongli, before the incident. He was an executive leadership in government. He divorced when his son was three years old and raised his son all by himself. He said, Teacher Wang had always been taking care of Meng Chao. She often tutored him after class. However, at first, he did have doubts about the two nights of tutoring every week, because Meng Chao's Chinese scores were good, and he had already been tutored for math and English. He was worried that was too much for Meng Chao. But Meng Chao insisted on being tutored by Wang Yongli, and Wang Yongli also personally persuaded Meng Chao's father repeatedly, saying that Meng Chao was very promising and should go to the top university. At this time, the teacher who was considered as the godmother was already the sweet pea of Meng Chao, and actually, they were making out on the so-called tutoring nights. Meng Chao was precocious. He had a girlfriend named Liu in class 15. Before that, he met his ex-girlfriend Han Fei online, who was five years older than him. In October 2006, Meng Chao was caught playing poker in class. He admitted his mistake to Wang Yongli after class, and after that, the two became friends. Soon after, they talked more, got closer, and their relationship developed further. During the winter vacation, he recognized her as his godmother. In March 2007, the school organized an outside training. It was on this day that the two established a romantic relationship. Meng Chao sent a text message to Wang Yongli saying he missed her, and she replied with 130, which means I miss you in internet slang. The extreme outbreak of emotions left the 17-year-old boy almost blank in his mind for a moment. The next night, he kissed Wang Yongli for the first time. He still remembered. The moon was big and beautiful that night. After returning home from training, Meng Chao received a call from Wang Yongli, who was crying. Meng Chao wasn't sure why Wang Yongli was crying on the phone, but she just cried and asked him if he had arrived home safely and if he got all the belongs. Hearing her crying made him heartbroken, so he took a cab to Wang Yongli's home. When Wang Yongli saw him, she still cried and said to him that she fell in love with him.
but they couldn't, shouldn't, wouldn't be together. Then he held Wang Yongli into his arms, but in Wang Yongli's statement, it was Meng Chao who said, love her, but she replied, no. On April 10th, 2007, Meng Chao wrote in his diary, society, ethics, and morality are forcing me to let go. I am unwilling to do so even if I risk my life. You can even ignore me, not think of me, and not care about me. You can do anything you want, but there will always a man be your side. But what is certain is that after Wang Yongli's seemingly ambiguous refusal, they did have sex. Meng Chao also broke up with his girlfriend in the same class, ending their seven-month relationship. Earlier, his girlfriend had seen his poem dedicated to my sweet pea on his notebook. Three or four months later, his girlfriend found out that sweet pea was Wang Yongli. Meng Chao and Wang Yongli often hung out together. They went to have coffee, listened to music together, and exchanged small gifts, almost like ordinary couples. On Saturday morning after class, Wang Yongli took Meng Chao to pick up her son and took him home. On Sunday afternoon, they sent her son to school together and then went to Wang Yongli's home for dinner in the evening. However, Wang Yongli's ex-husband claimed after the incident that Wang Yongli often discussed with him about getting back together every time they met. Meanwhile, she had been married with her current husband, Zhao Meng, for five years. Zhao Meng only returned home for five days every month due to long-term business trips at a construction company. Besides her ex-husband and current husband, before Meng Chao, Wang Yongli had another teenager boyfriend, He Xiaoli. In Wang Yongli's statement to the police, she admitted that she had a romantic relationship with Meng Chao, but Meng Chao liked her, but she didn't like him very much, because she preferred her another boyfriend who was later killed by Meng Chao. This boyfriend was He Xiaoli, a classmate of Meng Chao. In fact, Meng Chao transferred to class 15 in his senior year. As soon as he transferred to class 15, he heard that He Xiaoli and Wang Yongli had a special relationship. He Xiaoli often went to Wang Yongli's office, helped her get milk, and left together with Wang from the back door after class. He Xiaoli, who was the same age as Meng Chao, was the son of a state-owned enterprise boss. In March 2006, at the beginning of the second semester, Wang Yongli began to fall in love with He Xiaoli. Wang Yongli told the police that this was because He Xiaoli was too good to her, even beyond her ex-husband. I have a teacher-student relationship with He Xiaoli, and we accept each other emotionally. I admit that he is my boyfriend and he also admits that I am his girlfriend, but we never publicize it to others. She also said that she had told Meng Chao about her relationship with He Xiaoli, hoping to prevent Meng Chao from chasing her, but Meng Chao said that he didn't mind. According to her, when she and He Xiaoli first got together, they just ate and did exercises together. Two months later, He Xiaoli began to occasionally skip school and went to her home to make out with her. She told the police, This relationship only lasted for two or three months because I was worried that his excessive absence from class would affect his study. However, their text messages showed that the relationship continued until May 2007. The text messages between the two were affectionate and intimate. On May 7, 2007, Wang Yongli texted He Xiaoli, My Bu Xiaoli, your scent is all over my bed. I miss you so much. I want to hold you and kiss you and watch you fall asleep. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. On March 14th, Wang Yongli texted, Whether you need or not, whether you believe or not, whether you care or not, I will not give up my promise to love you for one day more than forever. He Xiaoli texted to Wang, Good night, Yongli. Sleep well. I love you forever one day more than forever. Sweetheart, wait for tomorrow, because tomorrow I will love you more than today. Please wait for me for six years. By then, only the two of us will be together. I will spend a loving and happy life with you. I know you don't believe me, but I will prove my promise then. I love you. Wait for me.
This forbidden affair came to an end in June 2007 because of Meng Chao. He Xiaoli's text messages sounded painful. He Xiaoli sent these messages to Wang Yongli. You don't know how heartbroken I am every time I see you with him so intimate and inexplicable. It's a heart-wrenching pain. I'm afraid someone will take you away from me because I can't live without you. I have one weakness, which is that I get very angry when others lie to me, even if it's a white lie, because I feel like I'm betrayed. I'm really afraid that you'll lie to me. And Wang Yongli texted to him, Every time I face your distrust and disrespect, I cry and slap myself in the face. I love you, but I'm scared of you now. When dissatisfaction and hatred block the eyes, all the love and memories all disappeared. The distance from deep love to hatred can be as short as an instant. There is also a message from Hishiaoli that does not show the time, which clearly points out the reason for the conflict between the two. I now know why you didn't want to have sex with me the day I was at your home and asked me to leave early, and why Meng Chao was late for class in the morning, because you think Meng Chao can satisfy your endless desires better than me in bed. Wang Yongli had promised to love you one more day than forever to both of the teenagers. There are also some similarities between the two teenagers. 1. Broken Families Meng Chao and He Xiaoli both came from wealthy but incomplete families. Meng Chao's parents divorced when he was three years old, and he was raised by his father. Although He Xiaoli's parents had not officially divorced, they separated. Because he was nearing the college entrance examination, his parents decided to postpone the divorce. He Xiaoli once told Wang Yongli's son why he and Wang Yongli were close. My parents don't care about me. Only your mother is nice to me, so I tell her everything. 2. Older Lovers They seem to have a tendency to choose older lovers. Meng Chao had a girlfriend five years older than him, and Meng Chao once said that he had a sense of rejection towards his mother. According to one of He Xiaoli's former classmates, He Xiaoli once pursued a female teacher who had a boyfriend at school, but failed. 3. Mature Image these two teenage boys seem to think of themselves as mature adults. Meng Chao's nickname in class were Uncle Chao, because that Meng Chao usually liked to talk about history and politics topics, and also likes to collect models of knives and guns. He Xiaoli was known for his mature outfit. He liked wearing polo shirt, suit pants, and leather shoes. He considered himself mature and did not participate in many of the group activities of other boys in his class. In the eyes of his family, he was quiet and obedient, and in the eyes of his classmates, he was a good student. The biggest common denominator between Meng Chao and He Xiaoli was that during their relationship with Wang Yongli, they both became irritable, angry, and silent. The timelines of the love between the two teenagers and the teacher were undoubtedly overlapping. Wang Yongli and He Xiaoli had been together since March 2006, and in March 2007 she had an affair with Meng Chao, which was less than a year later. From the information collected after the incident, although Wang Yongli and Meng Chao had a few minor disagreements after quarrelling, they did not officially break up. Although He Xiaoli also had disputes in text messages, she did not clearly propose to cut off their relationship. From Wang Yongli's own description afterwards, it was clear that she did not deliberately avoid mentioning one teenager to the other. At around 6 a.m. on September 10, 2007, Meng Chao came to Wang Yongli's house. Shortly afterwards, He Xiaoli suddenly opened the door with a key and came in. When he saw Wang Yongli in her pyjamas and Meng Chao on the bed, he said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have come and disturbed you. Then, despite Wang Yongli's attempt to pull him back, he left angrily. On September 13th, He Xiaoli returned the key to Wang Yongli. According to her, He Xiaoli said that he never wanted to go to her home again in order to avoid encountering Meng Chao. Since then, he Xiaoli often mentioned Meng Chao for various reasons, such as, go find your boyfriend Meng Chao, and, of course, I'm not as good as your boyfriend Meng Chao. 
On September 26th, Meng Chao's 18th birthday, he invited most of his classmates, except He Xiao Li, to his party. Meng Chao quickly got drunk. As soon as he returned to the classroom, Meng Chao suddenly rushed up and grabbed He Xiao Li's neck. After the students pulled him away, Meng Chao rushed up again and was pulled away again. According to Meng Chao, he spent his birthday night at Wang Yongli's home, where she gave him a T-shirt and a necklace as a birthday gift. Then they had sex. On September 27th, the day after Meng Chao's birthday, after school at noon, Meng Chao, who had just eaten lunch, saw Wang Yongli and He Xiaoli walking out of the restaurant across the street after lunch. Wang Yongli told the police that Meng Chao asked her why they were together. She said that He Xiaoli wanted her key back. Meng Chao asked her not to give the key to He Xiaoli, and she said she would consider it. However, Meng Chao told the police that Wang Yongli later told him that He Xiaoli wanted the key to take pictures of her and Meng Chao making out and post them online. Long repressed resentment exploded on this day, and Meng Chao wrote down a plan to kill He Xiaoli. However, the handwriting was very sloppy and difficult to read. In the afternoon, he put the plan in a magazine and returned to school with the criminal tools. Wang Yongli did not go to school in the afternoon on September 27th, but instead visited a colleague. After two English classes and a PE class in the afternoon, Meng Chao said that he gradually calmed down and gave up the idea of committing a crime, just wanting to talk to He Xiaoli. Meng Chao left school at 1655 and went to the home of He Xiaoli, who had returned home earlier. According to Meng Chao, the address was provided by Wang Yongli. At around 17 o'clock before Meng Chao arrived, He Xiaoli called Wang Yongli and told her that he had already arrived home, complaining that she had not contacted him in the afternoon and asking Wang Yongli to come home early as well. At 17.30, Meng Chao arrived at He Xiaoli's home. According to Meng Chao's unilateral confession, after arriving at He Xiaoli's home, he tried to have a good talk with him, but He Xiaoli had a quarrel with him. When He Xiaoli turned around to get him some water, he took out a knife from his handbag and stabbed him twice in the back. He Xiaoli tried to turn around, but Meng Chao stabbed him three times in the chest and abdomen. He Xiaoli fell to the ground and stopped moving. Then Meng Chao fled. At this time, it was only a few hours after Meng Chao's 18th birthday. At 1758, Meng Chao received a call from Wang Yongli. Meng Chao told Wang Yongli that he had played tennis and would be home soon. Wang Yongli asked him to call her after he got home. At 18.30, Wang Yongli received a call from He Xiaoli's mother, who had found He Xiaoli's body and said that He Xiaoli had been killed. After hanging up, Wang Yongli called Meng Chao again and said, He Xiaoli had an accident. His mother cried and asked me to go to his house. I was afraid. Meng Chao later said that Wang Yongli had asked him if he had touched He Xiaoli, and he replied, No, why? Meng Chao said that he spent the night at Wang Yongli's home on September 29th because Wang Yongli had been extremely depressed for several days and was always crying. He told Wang Yongli that he had killed He Xiaoli and mentioned that he would turn himself in the next morning. He said that Wang Yongli was not surprised, but said that he was her only spiritual pillar. I can't live without you. Don't be so silly. This case can't be solved. Are you really willing to leave me alone? However, Wang Yongli denied to the police that Meng Chao had mentioned turning himself into her. On the morning of September 30th, Meng Chao was taken away by the police in the class. On November 7th, 2008, the Guizhou Provincial Court made a final ruling of death penalty for Meng Chao. The two most important points for Meng Chao's death sentence are, first, he had a plan to kill people, and second, his method was cruel. Regarding whether Wang Yongli was the instigator of the case, there are three different opinions. One viewpoint is based on Meng Chao's statement that Wang Yongli instigated the murder. Meng Chao said that Wang Yongli once told him, He Xiaoli has been pursuing her, but she has not agreed. 
He is a very abnormal person with a strong possessiveness towards her, and he has abused and threatened her, even choking her neck. He even said that he would cut off Meng Chao's head. Unlike what Wang Yongli had said, Meng Chao also said that Wang Yongli had not explicitly expressed that she and He Xiaoli were in a romantic relationship, and that she wanted to be with Meng Chao very much, but because of He Xiaoli, she could not get close to him and had to avoid him. She could only be with Meng Chao if He Xiaoli left. In addition, Meng Chao mentioned that He Xiaoli had threatened to expose the affair between Meng Chao and Wang Yongli to the media and school leaders, making it impossible for us to stay at school. However, these highly suggestive descriptions came from Meng Chao's side, and there is no other text message or actual evidence to prove it. One viewpoint is that the case does not come from Wang Yongli's instigation, but from Meng Chao's wishful imagination because there is no evidence in the file that Wang Yongli instigated Meng Chao to kill someone. And from the details of the facts, Wang Yongli had deeper feelings for He Xiaoli and had never rejected He Xiaoli, but rejected Meng Chao once, so there is no motive for Wang Yongli to instigate the killing. Another viewpoint is that Wang Yongli is not responsible for this matter and can even be called a victim. As a mature woman, Wang Yongli had good performance in teaching and close relationships with students. It was her open teaching philosophy that had been misunderstood by Meng Chao and He Xiaoli, who were entangled with her due to their mother complex and couldn't get rid of it. Well, which of these three statements do you agree with? After Meng Chao was arrested, Wang Yongli had already moved out of her original apartment, and no one could contact her. On February 27, 2008, Wang Yongli was fired by the school. Over the years, Wang Yongli has completely disappeared from the public, 